church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our church. church. Like you said, no, uh, about this time you come here, a thousand days are like a year to him, or a thousand years like a day to him, you know? Yeah. Amen. So, here. Time's coming. Time's coming. Speak the truth. teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees is. The law, the law, the law. Right? Mm -hmm. Strict regulations. Yeah. Um, the Torah, they had to do certain things. And if they broke that rule, then they were stoned or whatever, put out of the church. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees, they disagreed on a lot. Um, major theological disputes, uh, political views. They united only because they wanted to put Jesus out. Now, have you ever, it's like the mafia. You know, they're fighting with another mafia game. 
and they're getting together in the war and together, you know? And, and then all of a sudden, here's this third person who comes in and he starts taking it, the territory. He starts taking, uh, let's just call the rock over here his territory. Let's just call the stone over here his territory. He gets in there and he starts taking that away and they don't like it. One can't win against him. The other can't win against him, but they get an idea. Hey, even though we don't get along, let's join together mm -hmm. to take this guy out. Mm -hmm. And that's what they wanted to do. Whack him. They wanted to whack him, get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus' um, description of Israel's religious leaders is reminiscent of Moses' rebuke when he rebuked Israel for rejecting the Lord. Jesus then compared Israel's rejection of God with its rejection of itself by um, meteorological terms like heavens and, and uh, rain and uh, showers and dew. And Moses elsewhere calls heaven and earth as witnesses against the rebellion rebellious Israel. Now, he's talking about, when he says it like this, he's talking about the, the way that they did religion. It wasn't true. The Pharisees and Sadducees, it was always an outward, an outward appearance thing. You know, you have to keep strict <coughs> dietary laws. You have to not work on Sunday. You have to earn the Sabbath which isn't Sunday, but um, they weren't allowed to do anything. So then they had to come in, up with, well, what was allowed? Was it okay to carry a basket, or is that considered work because you're picking it up? You know, I mean, they were that detailed. Um, now the disciples, they should have collected these leftovers, right? I mean, they had tons of leftovers. They should have collected it and brought it with them for that day. But they did. They left it behind. Now, they were concerned with this because they thought, you know, Jesus is talking about bread. And we left the bread behind. We should have brought the bread with us. Now we don't have any food. You see, you know, sometimes we see miracles in our life happen. And then we, for a while goes by, and then, and then we're like, well, I wonder if. I wonder if it's possible. I wonder if God can do that. You know, they, they missed the whole idea. Jesus performed the miracle when he gave them food to eat. Yeah. With the 5,000 and 4,000. He could have did it again. So he missed the point of the faith. See, sometimes, it's just like that growth on my mom's head that she had, and you've heard me talk about it before, how, you know, it was just ugly to look at. And it was big. It was a good-sized little golf ball on top of her head. And, um, you know, I just got upset one day and just thought, well, you know what? The Word says that if I pray and I believe, that I can have that. So I started praying over that thing. And I'd lay my hands on that every time I went over at night and pray over it. And I'd command that thing to die out at the root. See, that's the thing. Everything has a start in your life. Mm -hmm. that's every right. sin, Amen. every illness, everything has a start. Amen. So in order for that mm -hmm. to die out, you have to say, this ain't happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be talking about binding and loosening later on. But the Lord gave us the keys. He gave us the power to say, you know, that's right, I bind this, and I had to put a name to it, whatever it is. Whatever sins in your life, maybe you don't know what it's called. Maybe it's just something that's nagging you. You have to put a name to it. You have to command that thing to die out at the root. Amen. So I would go over there, and I'd lay my hands on it, and I'd I'd say, you die out at the root, you're not going to grow any larger, you're going to just die. And it took probably a month. I'm not going to say it happened just like that. 
But what the, but I do believe the very first moment I laid my hands on that, it started to die. And you know, when you have something that's got roots in it, it takes it a while to die out. Mm -hmm. It's just like something that's grown up big. When the roots start dying, it starts to wilt, mm -hmm. right? It starts mm -hmm. to wilt and die. Well, that's what that thing did. It started to die the very first moment I put my hands on it. Yeah. It took a while for it completely to go away, but it's no longer there. Thank you, Her forehead is as smooth as it can be. Thank now, you, I you. look back at that in my life whenever my faith starts to die out, because I know that I know that I know that if you truly believe and you stand on God's word, whatever that is, whatever that sin is in your life, it can die out if you want it to, see, if you command it to, if you believe it to happen. See, I used to, with cigarettes, when I used to smoke, oh, that was the hardest thing I ever, ever had to overcome. Amen. Yeah. But it was even harder than the drinking. But, you know, I kept praying. I kept praying. I kept asking God and asking God. And it happened. Sometimes things don't happen all at once, mm -hmm. but if you believe, it will. Amen. So these disciples, they, they could have collected all that bread, but they didn't. It could have been an act of carelessness, you know, they weren't paying attention, or it could have been an act of like this. Let's just say, and take Jesus for granted. Ah, he'll do it again. He can do it again. Now, Jesus, God knows when you're testing him. <laughs> he knows when you're saying, hey, I know you'll do it, Lord, and you're taking him for granted. God wants us to dig deeper. He wants us to dig deeper. He doesn't want us to just come to church, sit down, listen to what the preacher has to say, go home, read your Bible once in a week, and... That you've done your Christian duty. No, 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 no. There's a deeper level you can reach with God. Amen. And it takes work. And it takes climbing. And it takes digging. And I'm getting off the message here, but that's okay. Um, I have to share with you, and maybe it's time to do that. So I have to share with you something over a period of time that God has given me, and it just came to realize it morning. I've been praying with a pastor and another lady, and if anybody wants to come and pray, we pray every Monday evening now, but it was Tuesday, but we get together and we're full gospel, so we, we got the times going on, right? And we got the praying going on. If anybody is like shy about that, don't be. It's a gift in the Bible. You can look it up in Acts, First Corinthians, go right through it. But anyway, we were praying with Holy Ghost fire. And uh, when I was praying, and I, uh, God gives me things with pictures, I was praying, and I seen this big old angel with the wings stretched out, you know, like he's ready to, I don't know, you know those gargoyles that are on top of roofs and stuff, and they're just ready to come? Well, this was an angel, a warrior angel. And he was ready to come, and he was like big. But he was shadowy, and it kind of got me questioning, well, why was he kind of shadow looking? Because I wanted him to have the big white wings, you know? Uh, and I kept thinking, why is he shadow looking? Why is he shadow looking? And the first thing that came to me is that he was a warrior angel and he was ready. He was ready to come. Well, I kept thinking about that and a couple weeks went by and we prayed again, and, and then uh, 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 she, call, uh, she called me one night, and she said, uh, you know, I had a dream. I said, you had a dream? She said, yeah, i got to tell you this dream. Now, this wasn't that night. This was like a couple weeks later. And uh, she said, I had a dream about a lot of angels, and they were saying, you got to warn the people. you got to warn the people. I'm like, well, did you get anything else? No. And um, and that that was all that was said. 
Well, that got me thinking, you know, I thought, well, okay, seen this angel and then a dream that angel of the warning had to warn the people. And then last night, um, before I went to bed, because I had been studying and reading, which obviously is not going to be out today with the big message, but <laughs> anyway, I, I was reading and studying. But I laid down to go to sleep. When I laid down to go to sleep, I seen this face of a horse. And I'm, I laid my head down on the pillow and went, well, well, I don't know what the face of a horse means, but okay, okay. So, um... I, when I fell asleep, I, I dreamed a process of dreams. The first dream that I had was, um, I don't know how to explain this, I was in the ground, under the ground. And it was like goldish, whitish color. And it was like dried, ashy bones uh, of the Catholic Church. And I was crawling, trying to get up to a higher place. And this is the higher place that we need to get to. And this, there was this guy behind me, and I didn't want to go anymore. It was hard. You know, I was digging into these bones, if you can picture that. And then I was crawling up, and every time I moved further, there would be another head or some kind of ashy thing. And, I was like, oh man, I want to go back, I want to go back. And he was like, moving me forward. No, go up, go up. And I remember getting through the top of it and getting up on top of the, the Catholic um, bones. And I was seeing freedom being leashed out of the rules, regulations, or whatever. Then the next dream I had... I had three dreams, it's weird, but the next dream I had, I went into this room, and it was a school, it's like a classroom, and we were learning spiritual things. We were learning freedom of the gifts, and, and uh, a higher insight, and everybody was learning about love and everything, but the seats were hard, see? And I think the seats being hard means the hard, strict regulations of past church ideas. You know, all churches have their own doctrines. They all teach different things. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, and vice versa. Well, after that, I had another dream. And the dream went into a classroom that had padded, cushioned, heated seats. And it was just beautiful. And I woke up and I'm like, what in the world, Lord, are you trying to tell me? And I sat down to finish my message, typing, and he, he gave it to me. He said, we're all walking on dry bones. I said, dry bones? What do you mean? What do you mean, God, we're all walking on dry bones? And he said, every generation that's went before you, that's passed. Every generation that's preached the gospel, that's raised spiritual revival, has passed. Every generation that's conquered the, the re, uh, religious traditions and laws of man are passed. Jesus Christ has set freedom in the land. <coughs> And I, I was like, wow, every generation, you know, they talk about the Brownsville revival and, and all these revivals that's happened. And, and I believe that we're living in a generation where revival is going to spring up and start happening because I believe this is a generation where God is going to come back. I do. I do believe that. So, and I'm thinking, you know, we fight against demonic influences and spiritual things. And people think, oh, I'll talk about that. There's no ghosts. There's spirits. People call them ghosts, but they're spirits. And they're evil. I mean, they, they put on the facade that they're old aunt grannies, whatever, but that they're not. They will put you under. Yeah. They'll put you under. And sometimes they'll cause you to get into sin. 
you know, it'll cause you to... And let me tell you, if you're a new believer in Christ, if you've asked the Lord in your heart, you're a new believer in Christ, and you're not getting in God's Word and being discipled, that enemy is going to come against you. He's going to put alcohol in front of you. He's going to put a drug in front of you you used to do. He's going to put a girl in front of you used you used to know, if you know what I mean, or a man in front of you that you used to know, if you know what I mean. He's going to do whatever he can do to pull you down because yeah, he, he don't does. want you to go to heaven. He wants you to go to hell. That's right. So you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. and don't you think for one minute he don't put things in front of a preacher either because he yeah. does. He don't want us up here preaching the word. He wants us to get down. He wants us to get discouraged. He wants us to get depressed because we don't see the numbers in the church. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, we can't do that. We have to be a warrior for Christ. Mm -hmm. We have the keys within us to fight. Hallelujah. And we need to use them. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We need to use them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When Peter, uh, when Jesus talked about giving Peter the keys, Everybody goes, what's the keys to the kingdom of heaven? You know, we are living in the kingdom of heaven right now within us. Amen. We just don't Lord. use it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I know. I know. We just don't use it. We need to start speaking up. We need to start proclaiming his name. You know, people don't like it when you start talking about Jesus, do they? They don't like it. They don't like it in the workplace. Now, so, some workplaces you do have to be careful, careful because you know that that's your job, that's your income, uh -huh. that's what you're bringing home. So you can't really just go out there and start preaching Jesus if they don't allow it. Uh -huh. But if you're speaking to somebody one on one, they ask you a question, it's okay to answer. Uh -huh. Because I'm gonna tell you something. People come to you. They may not like what you have to say, but if they got a problem going on in their life, you're the first one they're going to come to for prayer. That's right. Because they know you're a believer. Because they know you've got the power within you. Because they see Jesus in you. Right. And sometimes you can lead somebody that you're in sin with to God. Just by talking about God. And then, it's the weirdest thing, but it, uh, if you have been in a relationship with somebody you're not supposed to be in a relationship with, and then you're talking about God while you're in that relationship, and then you overcome it, you overcome the relationship because it's not supposed to be that way, um, God will use you. Amen. He'll take what was meant for bad and turn it around for good Amen. and bring that person to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So many things. God will use to bring you to Him. He will draw the Holy Spirit into somebody's life. All you got to do is say Jesus or God. What's the person going to think about? Jesus or God? It's like a pink elephant. You know? Just get the word out. It doesn't have to be preaching to somebody. So, um, Oh, my place. I'm going to read from 13 to 18. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Many of Jesus' uh, contemporaries, they recognize his prophetic role. Herod suspected that he was uh, John the Baptist, you know. He thought he was John the Baptist. 
resurrected from uh, from Jesus' miracles. Others thought Elijah, and some thought Jeremiah, because he was the weeping prophet. He preached and preached and preached, and we don't know to this day that anybody got saved. Peter was blessed because he had come to correct conclusion about who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. The person of Jesus. The Lord added, however, that this was not a conclusion. Peter had come to himself, but, G but God the Father had to give him the revelation. You know, with revelation comes strength and power. When we're studying God's Word and the Holy Ghost shows us something out of His Word, oh man, that gives you power. That gives you strength. Amen. That gives you energy. That resurrects life in you. The living Word. It's the rhema of God's Word. It's the logos of God's Word. You might hear those words sometimes in the church world. You know. Power. Dunamis power. So he says, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Now, Peter's name was Petra, Petros, Rock, Little Pebble. Mm -hmm. He meant the rock. Jesus is the rock. But when, they, when uh, Peter said that, a lot of people say, well, Peter was the first pole. You know, the Catholic Church will say that. He wasn't the first pole. Um, Jesus was saying, upon this church, upon this, here, I, you are the rock, upon this, I will build my church. What did he mean when he said, Peter, upon this, I will build my church? Did he mean it was Peter? <coughs> he was saying what Peter said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Upon the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That's right. Upon Lord. that, he will build his church. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think back over the generations and generations and generations. <laughs> Twelve people changed the world. Yes. Twelve people brought Christianity all over the world. From that 12 to more 12, to more 12, to more 12, to more. It grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And, grew. and the faith grew and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What do you mean when he said the gates of hell will not prevail against it? Hades is the Greek uh, name for hell. The place of departed souls. The dead. It is the general name for his preliminary place of punishment for the unrighteous prior to final judgment. Mm -hmm. Luke 16, 19-31. In this passage, the gates of hell may mean the powers of death. In a broader sense, it refers to Satan as all Forces of evil. You know, you, I hear people, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You have no power over me. Well, Satan can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. But he can send his demonic forces out. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, binding and loosing. I want to talk about that for a minute. You know, you hear that all the time in the Pentecostal world. I bind you, Satan. I lose you. Binding means to forbid. You forbid something from happening. You forbid this from taking control in your life. You forbid this for uh, a sickness coming on you. You forbid it. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Loosing. Uh, loosing means to... Uh, uh, it means to let go of, to let it happen. It's okay, whatever. Healing. When you say, like, say you have a sickness, 
You can loose on earth. I loose healing to me. I loose whatever will be loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. You know, we kind of used it in the wrong way. Um, nothing can stop the power of Christ. <coughs> nothing can stop the power of Christ church. For what he wants to happen, for what he wants to accomplish in this world, no power from hell will stop it. Amen. Because yep. Christ's rule will remain. His word will last forever and ever and ever. Amen. After we're gone, his word remains. Amen. He first spoke his word, and his word will be the last. Yep. Honey, can you turn that off, whatever that is? I think it's speaker. Just flip off, though. So. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What of you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what of you loose on earth shall be loosened. You got it. You know, Jesus uh, told us to find the strong man. What's a strong man? Oh my gosh, for me it was alcohol. Mm -hmm. For me it was nicotine. Mm -hmm. For me it was pills. The crush. Sex. Mm -hmm. You think that's bad to say? No. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It can be a power. It can be a stronghold in your life. Yeah. You know? Anything yeah. can. Anything can. Anything can be a stronghold. Jesus said, we're to bind that. Mm -hmm. We're to forbid it from happening. Yeah. Right? Lord, Lord. Well, why if you don't want to forbid it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-oh. Shame. Shame and guilt comes, right? Shame and guilt comes because that's the old enemy. That's the enemy. Look what you did. You shouldn't have done that. What's going to happen? Oh, my God. Yeah. You're not really a Christian. <laughs> See, you got to really want it. Yeah. I haven't really won it. But boy, did I also want the other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is a stronghold. You're like this. It's like that tug of war. Oh, no, no, I don't want it. Oh, I know I need to. Oh, I don't want it. Back and forth, back and forth. But man, it comes to a point, you'll come to a point. So there'll be a break and we'll choose one way or the other. And our job as ministers and preachers is to preach the truth so we'll know to take the right road uh -huh. and not the wrong. Yeah. And you know what? It's hard. It is hard. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. It is hard when you're trying to break a stronghold in your life. Yeah, that's for sure. But Jesus says he'd give you the power. Use Amen. it, buddy. Lord, That's Lord. right. Uh -huh. You got to speak it out. I forbid Amen. that from taking control of my life. I forbid it yes, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. I forbid it. What's forbidden on earth is forbidden in heaven. Well, what's that mean? Well, he's going to give you the power. Amen. But you first got to speak it out. It's got to be truth Amen. to you. Amen. No forsakes. Never forsakes. No. When we, when we get the revelation of that, I think a lot of things can happen in our life. Let's look again at Matthew 16, 19 for a second. The more correct reading of this would be the words binding and loosing do not convey that Jesus meant. Here's one of those places where knowledge of the Hebrew roots uh, <coughs> straightens out the whole doctrinal issue. The Hebrew for binding is to disallow or forbid, and the Hebrew for loosing is to allow or permit. So the verse should read, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you forbid on earth shall have been forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth shall have been permitted in heaven. Jesus was saying that binding and loosing are rather permitting and forbidding. 
they're, they're connected to the issue of authority. They're connected to the issue of, of the observance of the Torah, the law. You know, yeah. I think, too, you know, this whole passage, go back up to where it says mm -hmm. that flesh and blood had to reveal that to them. And then you go down here to where it's talking about binding it on earth and in heaven. It relates to the fact that, you know, like Ephesians, it says that our battles are flesh and blood. You know, that they are spiritual battles, That's but right. they come back to the flesh and blood. Same way with. You know, flesh and blood didn't reveal Christ to Peter. God revealed it to him. It was a spiritual thing in the yeah. heart. Uh, but the flesh and blood God, you know, I mean, to the spirit. Same way with the spiritual. We have to remember the battles we fight are really spiritual battles. But they are manifested in the flesh. That's right. That's so, right. you know, we have to remember that, you know, we're going out there and we're trying to fight a war in the flesh, you know, we want to play white and war with somebody that hurts them. The Bible tells us to pray for that person. You know, we're to, we're to speak good for that person. You know, they yeah. hurt us. <coughs> you know, the Bible says, you know, we have a desire to do something. We have to pray that the Spirit will help us. Jesus said, I'll send you a helper, you know. So, so, you know, we have to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to have an affair with that person, even though in my, you know, in the flesh, that would be pleasing. I don't want to hurt that person, I, you know. So you pray for that person to know that if you actually went ahead and did what you wanted in the flesh, it's harmful for both of them. Mm -hmm. So if you really love that person, you're going to say, you know, look, this is not going to happen, you know. So I said, I think, I think the whole thing, what he's talking about here is, we have to remember how the Bible tells us to fight that battle in the spirit, mm -hmm. and and. You know, it's like, just like you're saying, binding and loosing. We do that through words. That's right. And the Bible tells us that's how we fight our battles with the sword of the spirit, you know, the word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I say, we want to get in the flesh and we want to fight that guy upside the head or, <laughs> you know, hop in bed with that woman or whatever, you know, I mean, or, or, or have, a, have a drink in the bottle or, you know, or even, you know, in families and stuff, you know, we want to tell that person what we think of. And a lot of times we're way better off if we just keep our mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, I'd say, I'm sorry, I, I just... No, no, that's fine. I like the interactive. Good session, brother. I like it. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah. Once yeah. again, if we just speak what the Lord gives us. Yes. Yeah, it's opening up, you know, letting the Holy Spirit work through you guys, you know. And not just me standing up here. You all work together. The church works together. It's not the building. It's you guys. We empower each other. Or we work with each other. We try to help one another when we're down. We try to help one another when one's in sin. And, and you know, um, we try to disciple each other, walk beside them. That's our kid, why wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, this, uh, this forbidding and loosing was part of the observance of the, the Torah. Um, and like I said earlier, the rabbis' uh, generations have decided what is kosher, in other words, yeah. what's not kosher, what is sin, and what's not sin. And we know that was the law. But today, we serve the Savior mm -hmm. and yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And he set us free from a lot of those laws. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but he still, in his word, in the New Testament, has certain things he calls sin. Amen. Now, we are to walk the best way we can possibly walk before him. But that doesn't mean we're perfect. Right. It means that when we come up with a stronghold in our life, we need to do the very best we can to overcome that thing. And we need to get other Christians praying with us and helping us walk. Amen. Because if we don't, we fall. Uh -huh. Scripture says, I think it's James 5.16, that um, 
you know, one falls and he doesn't have a friend, then he's lost. Right. That means you don't got somebody walking beside you to help you walk the right way, you're going to be lost. What's that mean? Hell. Hello. Hell. That word is not used very much in churches anymore. There is a hell. There is a fiery lake. I, I don't understand some things about the Bible, and I'm just going to be right up front and tell you, I don't understand some things by, about the Bible, but I believe every single word that's in there. Amen. I don't understand because I'm human. I have a human mind. When I get revelation from God, He gives it to me through the Spirit. Lord, Lord. Amen? Just like Bruce was saying. That's how He gave it to Peter, through the Spirit. Amen. How do you think I like laid my head down on the bed and seen a picture of a horse in front of me? Through the Spirit. Yeah. We have to listen to God. Mm -hmm. I think we're living in a time where God is calling for warrior people to stand up. He wants us to dig deeper. You know, we don't know our past, our generations that were before us, but I'll tell you one thing. There's mighty men, of, of mighty men and women of God who have stood up and held that torch before us. And they have given it to us to go forward with the Lord's word. And God has called us to preach his word. Go in all the world. And if we're not doing that, we are not being loyal to him. Mm -hmm. God has given me a second chance. Has he given you yeah. a second chance? Yes, he has. Thank you, Lord. Has he given you a third, a fourth, a fifth? Yeah. Do what you can with it. Amen. God will never, ever, ever give up on you. Mm -hmm. It's you that gives up on yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. You have power. You have power in you. You have power in here. Power's in your words, right? Power is in your words. Yeah. God spoke this world into existence. Mm -hmm. He spoke it out. You have the Spirit of God inside you. You speak it out. Yep. Amen. Whatever you don't want in your life, speak it out loud. You have to scream it in front of the mirror. You know how many times I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, you are the righteousness of Christ. You. Yes, you. Yep. Yes, you, that low life, that drunk that used to do all kinds of stuff. Yes, you. Yes, you, the one that lied. Yes, you, the one that woke up where you shouldn't have been. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. You are the righteousness of Christ, and you are not going to believe that filthy stuff that the enemy keeps telling you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All that's dead and gone. I'm a new person in Christ amen. today. Victory in Jesus. Yes, amen, brother. Thank you, Lord. Let's just sing that. Don't you want to sing that old hymn? Yeah. Can we find it? I don't know. <laughs> I heard an old old story how a Savior came from glory how he made the plain to walk again and he caused the blind to see I heard about his son on me and his precious blood atoned me then I repented of my and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. I love me and I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath this cleansing blood. Oh, yeah. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Lord only. Now you go home this week and you sing that song to yourself over and over. Yeah. If you can't remember the words, look it up on the internet. You got a phone, use it. You know what I'm saying? Victory in Jesus. Amen. You can speak it out for yourself. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Let's close in prayer today. And, uh, Brother Ron, would you close us in prayer? Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for the word today, Lord. Yes. Father, Father, we just 
thank you that we can lean on you, Lord, to, yes. to change us, Lord, and improve us, Lord, and, and to uh, always look to you to change us, Lord. And I just thank you and I praise you for your presence in our lives, Lord. And Father, just let us continually yes. to look to you for answers yes. that we have, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. 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 God, though, be blessed, and the Word of God works when you work it. So much. Hallelujah. Yeah.